Shark Nation, what is good, man? If you're new, welcome in. If you're not, welcome back. I might see 33,000 to be exact. And listen, man, we got another episode of the Seattle Blue Shark Dynasty, man, playing on the NCAA 06 Next Mod. And we are now in Season 2, Episode 5, man, back to back on them boys. And listen, man, if we take a look at last week, we had ourselves a good game against Oregon, man, on the road. We definitely showed up and showed out. As you can see here, Credible going all the way. The opening kickoff, taking it back for a touchdown, man. Big time play right there. And honestly, it wouldn't stop right there. The Sharks offense would roll. And the Sharks defense nearly put out a shutout against a really good um, Oregon Duck offense, man. As you can see, Edwards coming up with a big time interception. Joe Love Lady was absolutely surgical in this game. Finding multiple receivers all across the field, man. And the team as a whole honestly just looked really good. It was a great game from start to finish. And uh, as we see, Nehemiah Hood kind of putting the finishing touches on this game, man. Final score ended up being 27 to 9. And if we jump in and take a look at some of the stats, man, you can see Love Lady went 14 for 24, 209 yards and two touchdowns. Tay Ray went for 61 yards. Rush went for 40 yards and a touchdown. And then we see Glover, who had a pretty decent game, had six receptions, 84 yards, two touchdowns. Jackson followed that up with four receptions for 48 yards. And you can see all the rest of the guys that got in the mix there, man. And then if we look on the defensive side of the football, we actually see States leading the way in team tackles, man. Came down with three tackles. And then Nehemiah Hood following him up with three tackles, two tackles for loss, and added a sack on top of that. And you can see, man, this list actually goes on and on. The defense was all over the field, man, flying around the football. And then we even see uh, Edwards came down with interception, man. Just really putting a statement, um, letting the nation know that this defense is pretty good, man. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, man. Is this defense legit? Or is it too early to tell? If you ask me, I think the Sharks defense is looking pretty good, man. But hey, only time will tell. The one thing we can say, though, is, man, this Sharks defense is much improved from last season, man. If you remember, there were times when we just gave up way too many points and ultimately it cost us a few games. But we move on. So if we take a look, man, at the top 25 polls, after that rather convincing win, man, we see Florida still on top. We see USC move up to the number two spot. And then if we go all the way down to number 17, we see the Sharks move up three spots, man. After that big time win against Oregon, team is looking really good, man. As we get a quick glimpse of uh, some of our offensive leaders, defensive leaders, and uh, right now, man, we're sitting at four and zero, and we couldn't ask for much more. Looking really good, man, all around. Like I said, this defense honestly has been driving the force of this team. But anyway, man, we go ahead and take a look at the Heisman watch, and you already know, man, we're hoping to see Jared Glover's name get back up on that top five list. But unfortunately, he just didn't do enough to get back on the top five, man. So look. It's going to be an uphill battle, but it's not to say we can't do it. We're just going to have to put in a whole lot more work. But anyway, man, we take a quick look at the players of the week. And we don't see any of our guys here this week as well. But anyway, man, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the conference standings where we see we drop down to the number three spot behind USC. And honestly, I'm not sure what's going on or how they're counting these votes, but I think we're kind of getting overlooked. And uh, that's no good. So anyway, man, like I said before, man, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to keep doing our thing and let the polls figure themselves out. All we need to do, man, is keep winning games like we've been doing, and the rest will figure itself out. So now we look at the coach report card where we see the board is talking to Coach Hughes and they're saying answering the media's post-game questions is always easier after a win. And we know that's the truth. And we already know, man, there's been some rumors circulating about John Hughes possibly leaving and this and that. But listen, man, like I said before, all we need to do is focus on winning. And as you can see right here, man, we are sitting at 4-0. and oh, Looking really good through, you know, the first part of the schedule, man, but this week... We are going to have to face Notre Dame on the road. And listen, Notre Dame is always going to be a tough matchup, no matter which way you slice it. So with another game on the road, we definitely need to make sure we lock in. But before we do that, man, we have got some recruiting updates. And listen, this class is stacking up to be a really good one. And look, man, I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and get right into it, man. The first guy we got is Jay Dean coming in at the tight end position, standing 6'4", 160. And this guy right here has got great hands and great height for the position, man. Standing at 6'4". And this kid right here has got tons of potential, man. He's actually a really good route runner for the tight end position. And you can see he's a little bit undersized, which kind of gives him an edge. Now, you might say there could be some downside as far as run blocking and things of that nature. But listen, if there's anything we know how to do, it's make it work. And so this guy is definitely going to be a great addition to our already dangerous offense, man. And uh, we're super excited about getting this guy on the field. Seeing him in that shark blue uniform, man. And when we were scouting this kid, he actually reminds us a lot of the David Njoku, Kellen Winslow type, man. Uh, a definitely a receiving threat type of tight end, man. Not necessarily going to be a run blocking tight end. But like I said, to add another playmaker to this already dangerous offense should be nothing but a good sign. So anyway, man, we're super excited to see Dean. 
And so now we take a look at a D Lyman T country, big country, man, coming up from Alabama, shorter Alabama. And this guy stands at 6'4", 330 pounds of pure muscle. And this guy right here is definitely going to be a big time playmaker, factor, disruptor, all of the above, man. This guy's a five star recruit. And uh, listen, man, some of his traits, man, he is a run stopper. They call him a bulldozer and just an absolute bully, man. And you can see, man, from some of his highlights, he clogs up lanes. And he's definitely going to be a big time player for Seattle. So now, man, we transition and we take a look at John Shannon. This guy right here is a free safety and played a little bit of quarterback in high school, standing at 5'10, weighing in at 170. And this guy right here is just absolutely got a high IQ on the football field, man. He knows the game in and out. And he really shines on the defense side of the ball, man. And uh, having some of that quarterback experience, he really knows how to read offenses. And he almost knows where the quarterback's going to throw the ball before he even throws it. As you can see right here, man, he's definitely going to be a playmaker. And listen, man, we are super excited for these guys. And last but not least, man, we got Xavier, a.k.a. Moses Malone, a quarterback standing at 6'5 and a half, 225. And this kid right here is someone... When you talk about him, when you see him play on the field, you just, you automatically can tell that this guy is gonna be a generational talent. And look, man, you might be wondering why they call this kid Moses. And rumor has it is he throws the ball with so much precision that he can actually split the C's. That's giving him the name Moses. Listen, I don't know about all that, but what I do know is this kid has an exceptional arm, man. And he can really put the football wherever he wants to, man. He's got pinpoint accuracy. Like I said, man, when you think about this kid, when you actually see this kid on the field, you will recognize he has the potential to be a generational talent, man. And to top that off, sending that 6'5", man, he's got some decent mobility and is a threat in the open field if you do not account for him. So listen, man, this kid right here should be a great addition to the Blue Sharks team, man. But with all the good comes a little bit of bad, man. One of his downsides is he does have questionable decision making and sometimes tries to force throws, given that he knows he can throw the ball all over the field. He'll try to play hero ball, but we'll fix that. But anyway, man, like I said, this Blue Sharks recruiting class is looking tough and we're going to keep adding on to that. And so if you guys think you can help the Blue Sharks and ultimately help the Blue Sharks win a title, man, this is how you can do it, man. So if you want to play for Seattle, man, all you got to do is number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, comment on this video or any video that you watch, hashtag new recruit. And when you do that, man, just leave your name, height, weight, skin tone, position. And if you want a backstory too, let me know that too. Like I said, man, when we started this, it's all about having some fun. So listen, if you think you got what it takes to play for Seattle, let me know, man. Let me know right now. We are taking all applications. You hear me? But I will say this, man, roster spots are filling up fast, as you can see. So if you want to do it, you better do it now. That's all I'm going to tell you. But anyway, man, it is time to go ahead and lock in and get ready for next week's matchup, which is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And listen, man, if you heard the news about Notre Dame, you know they got a new quarterback, right? And this guy right here, Riley Leonard, is legit, right? So this guy comes in transferring from Duke University after having a spectacular junior season. He's looking to come to Notre Dame and put his mark on the Fighting Irish team in his senior season, man. So he's got a lot to prove, right? And not only does he have a lot to prove, this guy has got absolute talent. Not only does he have the arm strength, but he has the IQ and can absolutely shred a defense if they are not careful. More times than not, that is actually what he does, man. And with that, he has got some really good weapons on this fighting Irish offense. One of them being Chris Mitchell, who is another transfer to the Notre Dame team coming from FIU, man, an absolute speedster on the edge. As you can see, man, he will leave defenders in the dust. Another guy we got to watch out for is a receiver named Great House. This dude is a special teams monster. And on the other side of the football, man, this defense is tenacious and ferocious as it gets, man. As you can see, they get to the football quick, they get to the football fast, and they make sure that they finish the play. So look, man, although the record doesn't reflect it, this is a good team on both sides of the football. And when you come to their stadium, man, not only do you got to play the team, you got to play the stadium. Crowd noise will be at a maximum. So anyway, man, we definitely want to go ahead and lock in. But speaking of locking in, man, we got to get our players together, man. We have another team infraction. And this time, this one might hurt. This is our starting quarterback, Joe Lovelady. So let's see what they have to say, man. So Joe Lovelady did not do any film study with the rest of the position group. And after hearing that, man, I kind of feel like they're reaching. He's a starting quarterback. He just put in a whole lot of work. Listen, we ain't worried about that. No suspension here. Don't worry about it, Joe. We got you. Anyway, man, it's time to go ahead and lock in and get down to the field. Shark Nation. It's game time. I'm Brad Nessler, here along with two of the best commentators in the game, Kirk Herbstreit and Lee Corso. 
brisk, cool weather on tap for tonight's game between the away team and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. We're a good way through this incredible season, and we've got what looks to be an exciting game coming up. And here comes the Fighting Irish. The away team are a confident bunch of kids, and rightfully so. Kirk, this team is just too powerful. The away team has so many weapons offensively, but it all starts with their outstanding quarterback. Now against this defense, I look for him to have no problem spreading the ball around. This could be a career game. Nice pick, Kirk. I really believe that these guys are going to do it. <laughs> all right, folks, you heard the coach's pick. Now let's head down to the field for the coin talk. Shark Nation, it is that time. You know why we're here. You know what we came to do, man. It is time to get on the field and get down to business. So here we go, man. We're taking a close look at the coin toss. And we got our two team captains, Zarek Glover and Shannon Troop, calling the coin toss. Looks like we lost this one, and Notre Dame will receive. And like I said before, man, this is a matchup that should be pretty good. They got some really good players on their team, but so do we. So it is time to officially get this game underway, man. And Finn has got the kickoff lined up. And he kicks it off and kicks it out of bounds. No surprise there from our, our all-star kicker, Fitton, man. He's just having a rough season, man. But anyway, the Fighting Irish are going to start with this ball on the 36, man, as we get a look at their impact players. And here we go, man. Riley Leonard is dropping back to pass. He finds a receiver on the right-hand side who breaks one tackle, gets the first down, and gets brought down by Jenkins. So right out of the gate, man, Leonard firing, looking like he's ready to play, man. And we already know what he can do. You know what type of quarterback he is, man. So we gotta, gotta get our defense off to a good start. So here we go, man. It's first and 10 ball now on the 50. As we see Leonard drop back again. He's gonna scramble to his right hand side and he's still running. And after a good gain of about nine right there, he's brought down. So starting off hot already, man. Leonard having a nice couple plays right there. So now a second and one ball on the 41, man. Just over four minutes to go in this first quarter. And we see Leonard's gonna drop back to pass again. He's looking on the left for his receiver Mitchell and not able to make the connection right there as it was broken up. So good play by the defense right there, making our first substantial play of this drive. Anyway, man, it's going to be third and one ball still on the 41. And we see they're lined up in I form running back in the backfield. The shark closed the gap on the D line. And we see the fullback going motion to the right hand side. This is a big play right here. This is a big third down conversion on the first drive of the game. So we see them go with the passes under drops back. He's looking for his running back on the right hand side. And then Carter is right there to push him out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. So they're going to go ahead and punt this thing away, and it looks like it's going to be inside the 10, so Credible's just going to get out of the way. But for some reason, Gray comes down with the punt, and he fumbles on the one-yard line, and it's recovered by Notre Dame. And what a mistake right there by the freshman, Gray. I don't know why he tried to catch that football. They called kill on it. He caught it anyway. And then on the first play after the fumble recovery, man, we see Notre Dame get a one-yard touchdown pass. Leonard to his receiver right there man what a mistake the sharks finally got the stop they wanted and then a huge mental error right there by our freshman which resulted in the touchdown man the other way and so that's how we start this game man so after that crazy turn of events right there notre dame now has all the momentum at home this crowd is now in the game and we see the extra point is up and it's good so it's now seven nothing and the sharks are gonna have to respond rather quickly man because that was a huge play right there so here we go man they kick this ball off and it looks like it's going to go to go who's standing in his own end zone but he elects to return it out of the end zone he might have a little crease but then he's brought down before he gets to the 20 and so on that return man we do see an injury to one of the fighting irish looks like a wrist injury of some sort but anyway man now we get a chance to take a look at the blue shark impact players one's going to be joe love lady and nehemiah hood both had huge games last week, so hopefully they'll be able to do the same this week. But anyway, here we go, man. The Sharks' first offensive possession starts on the 17. And we see Ray in the backfield, who is going to get the handoff to the left-hand side. And he's got a whole lot of space to work with. And he gets the first down, runs over the safety, and then gets tackled down right at the 35, man. So nice open and run right there by Tay Ray, who we're really expecting a big game, this game, from him, man. He's been kind of quiet the last few weeks. And we definitely want to implement him in this offense, man. So here we go, man. It's now first and 10 ball on the 35. We're going to go with a play action. And Lovelady is quickly under trouble. But he scrambles to the left, trying to buy time. But then he runs out of it, man. And all those yards that Ray just gained, Lovelady just lost. So it's now second and 18. You can see this crowd is going crazy in the stadium, man, which is something we anticipated. And right now, we're kind of helping them out with some really bad 
mental error plays, man. Really would have loved to see Love Lady just throw that ball out of bounds. But anyway, man, here we go. It's second and 18. And we are going to go with a handoff up the middle to Ray again. But this time, the Fighting Irish defense was ready for it and tackled him right at the line of scrimmage. So that's a gain of nothing right there. So with two minutes and 20 seconds left in this first quarter, man, his score is 7 0. It's third and 18. Sharks on the 27. Trying to respond after a big turnaround play from the Notre Dame defense and then score with their offense. As we see Love Lady looking over the top to Glover, who might have had a step on the corner right there. Just couldn't come down with the catch. And you can see the big time quarterback and receiver having a little conversation right there, letting them know that was a big play. We definitely needed it. But anyway, it's going to be a long game. So we just got to lock in. So here we go, man. We're going to punt this ball away. And it looks like Great House is going to fair catch it on the 30. So the Sharks back on defense again. Let's see if we can't get another stop. The defense held up. And the last offensive possession Notre Dame had, but, you know, just couldn't quite stop him on the one-yard line. So, anyway, man, here we go. Ball on the 29. It's first and 10, and we see Leonard and Shotgun drop back again. He's looking for a quick screen to his receiver on the left-hand side, but it was not able to make that connection right there. So, now they're going to be looking at second and 10, and they're going to go quick option to the left-hand side. He makes a pitch to his running back, Love, who gets all the way down near the first down marker. He spun his way, and he did get past that first down marker. So now on first down, we see Leonard drop back to pass. He finds the receiver, Brigham, on the left-hand side, who gets dragged down near that first down marker yet again. So that's going to be another gain of nine. And right now, Notre Dame's offense is looking pretty good. They're absolutely rolling as we see them go with a play action as Leonard drifts to his right. He throws over the middle, down the field to Greathouse, who makes an outstanding diving catch right there man and Notre Dame is on fire right now and the Sharks have got to find an answer on defense otherwise this might be a really long game man so here we go it's going to be another first down for Notre Dame and we get a quick look at what Riley Leonard is doing on the field man absolutely dotting us up right now and so ball is down to the 24 about 50 seconds left in this first quarter man and we're going to see Leonard go with the option to the left he's going to cut up field get past a first down marker and then finally get tackled by Edwards the last man who was able to make that tackle Probably saving a touchdown right there. Big time play right there by Leonard. And we get an update on the Notre Dame player. Looks like he's going to be out for the game. But anyway, Leonard gets it all the way down to the 12. As he drops back, he's going to scramble to the right again. But then Carter is quickly there to snuff that out and get the quarterback sack, man. And Carter right there just showing off his excellent speed at the linebacker position and catching up to Leonard before he can do any more damage. So it's a good response right there by the Shark defense. We just got to see if we... Can stop them again so they're going to go with a triple option to the right hand side and leonard's going to pitch off to his running back love who spins his way down to the one and yet again another gas play and so at the end of the first quarter man it is seven nothing notre dame up right now and knocking on the door again looking to go put another touchdown on the board but it's third and one this is a big third down ball is actually on the three yard line man they're going to go in that same eye formation that we saw earlier as london drops back to pass and it's broken up by states and the Sharks come up with another big time stop in the red zone. And so it is now fourth and one. And Notre Dame has a big decision to make. And they are actually going to go for this on the three yard line. So can the Sharks stand up one more time and keep the Notre Dame fighting Irish out of the end zone at home? Here we go, man. And you're going to see the fullback motion out to the left hand side. So they are now in single back formation. And the Sharks kind of do all they can. As we see, Leonard's going to go off through the pass to the right to his tight end and made it look way too easy and the tight end is popping off right now standing right on top of the ref where's the flag at throw the flag man but anyway the sharks are not able to hold up against the notre dame fighting Irish man, and we see them put another touchdown on the board and so the number 17 ranked sharks our blue sharks are in trouble right now as we go down two scores on the road against notre dame man and we knew this team was much better than their record and right now they're proving it so listen the Sharks are going to have to respond in a major way, man. We definitely need to get points on the board, and we need it to happen quickly. So Credible is back on this return. He is going to field it as he goes up the middle of the field. He's still running. He's looking for a lane, but then he's brought down after a decent return right there. So the Sharks are going to start on the 18. Probably would have been better to just take a knee in the end zone. But anyway, man, here we go. As we see, Ray's going to get the handoff up the middle. He's got the first down and then some as he spun down after another nice game right there. So he's got 32 yards so far in this game. And like we said, man, Ray is somebody we definitely want to get involved in the game, but we don't want to get too far behind to where we can't utilize him. So we got to stay on pace, stay on track, man. So here we go. It's first and 10. We're going to see Ray get the handoff again, but this time he's not going to go anywhere. 
as the lineman, the D lineman right there was all over that one. Actually gets brought down for a loss of one. So now with just over four minutes left to go in this second quarter, man, it is second and 11 ball on the 31. And we see the Sharks are going to go in shotgun. Love Lady in shotgun. Ray to his right. And Love Lady's looking for a receiver. He's looking for Jackson, who he thought might have had the advantage over on that right-hand side, but just couldn't get the throw on target. So it's now third and 11, man. Ball still on the 31. Sharks need this one badly. And we see Love Lady is going back to shotgun, surveying in the field, drifting to his left. He's looking over the middle for Higgins, and Higgins comes down with the big time catch, converting on this third down. And listen, man, whenever we need a short handed player, whenever we need to find a receiver that we know is going to come down with the catch, it's got to be Higgins, man. Hollywood Higgins comes up big time for us right there, making that catch, converting the third down, man. And so the Sharks are now looking at first and 10 ball on the 43. We're hoping to get six out of this drive, man. So anyway, here we go. Love Lady still in shotgun with Tay Ray to his right. He's going to snap the ball. And he's under pressure quickly, but it was a quick screen. This goes to Go, who finds some space and runs out of bounds after a nice seven-yard run right there. So it's now second and three. And the Sharks right now starting to find some rhythm, starting to move the chains a little bit. So here we go, man. Second and three, ball on 36. Love Lady's going to go back in shotgun. Surveying the field. He was running out of time quickly, but he finds Hummel, who makes a nice catch, run a clean route. Gets all the way down to the 20. And that right there is another one of our freshmen, man. Alex Hummel. Great catch right there by the young freshman. We've seen we've seen him try to get involved in the game before, but just couldn't quite get the connection down. But it looks like Love Lady and Hummel might have worked on their timing. So great throw and catch right there. Gets the Sharks all the way down to the 20. So we're going to see Love Lady drop back to pass again. He's looking for Glover on the slant. Glover comes down with the contested catch and the first down. Putting the ball all the way on the five-yard line. And the Sharks are now in threatening position threatening to score man and finally get some points on this board man so we see the sharks are going to stick with the shotgun and they're going to go with a handoff to tay ray who's going to find the end zone on the left hand side man untouched and this was a drive that the sharks desperately needed man it was a great looking drive really something to get our spirits back in the game man get us mentally focused get us mentally locked in go down the field get a good drive before the second half man score and now let's see if the Sharks defense can finally make a stop and get the ball back in the hands of this offense that's looking really good right now. So here we go, man. The score is now 14 to 7. And Notre Dame started this game out really strong, but the Sharks are starting to fight back. So here we go, man. Fitton lines up the kickoff. It finally stays inbounds. And we're going to see Mitchell set to return this kick inside the 10. He makes a catch. He makes a juke move to the outside, to the sideline. He's got a whole lot of space. He's got a whole lot of green. And I don't think Hummel is going to be able to catch him. It's going to be a foot race. And Mitchell is going to win this one and take this kickoff all the way back to the house for a 93-yard touchdown return. So just as the Sharks were finally able to make some headway in this game, we see one of the big-time players make a big-time play and take the kickoff all the way back to the house putting the lead back up to a two-score lead man so it's now 21 to 7 and in no time the sharks are back down big again and so we're gonna have to respond i'm sure credible would love to return a favor here as he's gonna take this kickoff outside of the end zone but then he is gonna be brought down before he even gets to the 20 and so right now that has been the story of the game man notre dame has just come out way more prepared way more ready for this game and the Sharks are looking for answers, man. So we see Love Lady looking over the middle of the field. He finds Glover for a deep reception. And that's what we need right now, man. We really need to see a little bit more of Jared Glover in this game. Especially before halftime, man. If we can get Love Lady and Glover starting to heat up. Maybe even get a score before halftime. We may be in good shape. But anyway, man. That was a nice play. That got us all the way down to the 39. So about a minute and 45 left. And we see a handoff go to Tay Ray on the left-hand side, but Notre Dame was all over that, losing two yards on that play. So it's now second and 12, man, ball on the 37. And we see Love Lady's gonna drop back to pass out of shotgun again, looking over the top to the tight end, Jackson. But he was double covered right there and not able to make the catch. But we got a flag on the play, but they're gonna call offensive pass interference. And Coach Hughes is absolutely not loving that. And he's giving the ref a uh, earful man i i gotta agree with coach man i didn't see much right there but hey we gotta play on so now do we not only get that reception right there we lost a whole lot of yards so we got a lot of ground to make up as love lady goes in shotgun he is under siege and can't even get the throw off and we basically burn it down right there and it's now third and 27 ball on the 22 a minute and 13 seconds left and this crowd is on their feet making noise 
and trying to rattle this Blue Sharks offense, man. So on this big third down, man, we see Notre Dame bring the blitz and Love Lady is under pressure. He's just throwing the ball up. And thankfully, that one was swatted down and landed safely on the turf because that was a horrible throw right there. Could have been intercepted. But anyway, man, we're going to go ahead and punt this ball off as we see Greyhouse line up for the kick. And Diaz comes in and punches the ball out. But Greyhouse is able to recover his own fumble. But I love the effort right there from our freshman, Rodriguez Diaz, man. Came in with the peanut punch and really gave us a good chance to recover that football. But it just takes a Notre Dame bounce. And so they're going to start with the ball on the 42. Just under a minute left in the second quarter. We're going to see Leonard drop back the pass. He's looking for a receiver. His tight end on the right-hand side who makes a catch for a five-yard gain right there. So they get the five yards and they stop the clock by going out of bounds. And the one thing right now in this game we don't need is another Notre Dame score. So we definitely need to be able to hold them to at least a field goal, man. We just can't have another touchdown. So anyway, man, it's going to be second and five. Leonard's going to drop back the pass again. He's scrambling. He's going to break one tackle, looking for his tight end on the right-hand side who had nothing but space but could not make the catch. Thank goodness. That might have went for six right there. Leonard made an absolutely phenomenal play to not only shed the tackle but make the throw on the run as well, man. But anyway, it's going to be third and five ball on the 47 still. As we see Leonard and shotgun surveying the field, he's looking over the top for his receiver, but it's double covered. But Greyhouse is going to come down with the catch on the five. And that right there was what the Sharks could not have happened in this first half. What an absolutely phenomenal catch right there by Greyhouse. The big time receiver, man, getting his team all the way down to the four. And the Sharks right now are in trouble, man. We're going to see... Leonard go back and shotgun. He tried to scramble his way out of the pocket, but Tyler was right there to lay down the hit stick. Maybe try to slow him down a little bit in this game, man. So anyway, we're going to see Notre Dame's running back. Love come back in this game. Lining up in the backfield, man, as the Sharks try to close down the D-line. And Love's going to get the handoff to the right-hand side. And Carter was right there, but just wasn't going to be able to do enough to stop Love from getting into the end zone. And so that right there is a five-yard touchdown run. Extending this Notre Dame lead, man, now to three scores. Pinning this good extra point attempt, man. And that kick is up. The kick is good. And the score is now 28 to 7. And the number 17 Sharks are in upset alert right now. This is something we definitely did not expect. We knew this team was good, but we didn't know it was like that, man. And this is the first time the Sharks are actually, this season, are actually the team, you know, trailing. You know what I mean? So far in this season, the Sharks have been able to dominate on offense, and really, it's been the defense that's been able to shut teams out. This game has been a total flip upside down, man, and the Sharks are trying to find themselves uh, to be able to adjust, man. So we got to see what they can do to close out this second quarter, man, as we see Love Lady just overthrows Glover. But anyway, man, it's going to be second and 10 ball on the 16. Love Lady dropping back to pass again. He's in trouble yet again, looking for Glover over the top, but he was smothered double cover right there and yet again probably not the best decision from love lady but at this point it just seems like he's scrambling he's just trying to make a hero play on third and ten he actually finds glover over the middle this time gets the first down and so the sharks are going to burn their first time out to try and see if we can't take this drive somewhere get some momentum before the end of the first half man so we're going to see love lady back in shotgun again he's under trouble he's looking over the middle he finds higgins yet again what a great throw right there by Love Lady finding Higgins out of nowhere. And so the Sharks burn their second time out. The ball is now on the 43. This drive looking like it might have some promise. And so we see Love Lady drop back again. He's drifting to his left hand side. He looks like he might have Higgins over the top, but then he throws it out of bounds. And that was just very uncharacteristic of Love Lady right there. I mean, Higgins would have likely walked into the end zone. But Love Lady has just not have been he's just not been composed in this game, man. As we see, he's going over the top to Glover yet again, but he throws in triple coverage. And that's the way the first half is gonna end, man. Notre Dame came out and punched the Sharks right in the mouth. Not once, not twice, but three times, man. Making big time play after big time play. And that's gonna take us all the way into our halftime report. Brought to you by WX Sports Gear, man. And let's go ahead and recap this crazy first half. All right, man, if we take a look at the first half, man, we can definitely say that the Sharks are having a reality check. Um, the number 17 team, Blue Sharks, man, we definitely came in here unprepared and thought we could just run over the 0-5 Notre Dame fighting Irish, but they had something different to say, man. The score is 28-7, to and uh, it, the game has definitely reflected the score. They've dominated it on both sides of the football. Sharks offense has just been in disarray. 
and uh, gotta give it up to Notre Dame, man. They definitely came to play this game. And so leading the charge, man, and also gonna be the WX Sports Gear player of the half is Riley Leonard, man. We scouted this dude in the beginning of the game. We already knew what type of work he was gonna put in and put up, and he's definitely done that. Eight for 12, 108 passing yards, two touchdowns, coming in with an A plus, man. We gotta give it up, um, you know, give respect where respect is due. He's absolutely killing us, all right? <laughs> So good stuff from Leonard, man. But the Sharks are going to have to find a way to keep this dude in check. Um, if not, this is going to be a long game for the Blue Sharks. And, and it could definitely be our first loss of the season. It's, def it's not something that we want. But um, right now, Riley Leonard is uh, he's serving us up. And I'm sure this is something he's going to be planning to do for the remainder of this game and try to get his team their first win of the year, man. So this is a big time game for them as well as us, man. So anyway, good stuff right there by Leonard. And now we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at some halftime adjustments, man, because we definitely need to adjust something. So number one, defense tighten up. All right, we've had some ridiculous mistakes. Defense hasn't been too bad, but just a couple mental errors here and there that really, you know, gave Notre Dame the advantage. Number two, establish the run game. We definitely saw Tay Ray having a good first quarter, and then we got behind on the sticks, we got behind on the score, and we had to abandon the run game. We don't want to do that in the second half. And then number three, play to the whistle blows. We already see how this game is starting to get out of hand. We just got to, you know, close our eyes, put our heads down and keep swinging, keep swimming until the end of the game, man. So anyway, man, that is going to be the WX Sports Gear halftime report brought to you by WX Sports Gear, the official partner of the Blue Sharks. World-class athletes deserve world-class sports gear. So now let's go ahead and get into the second half where the Blue Sharks are going to start with the football and try to respond in this game and show some life. All right, man, so the Sharks are going to start the second half with the football starting on the 25 and we see Tay Ray get the handoff and we see Tay Ray get the first down and then some and right off the bat we're seeing our halftime adjustments man coach Hughes definitely let the team know I'm, I'm pretty sure that locker room was a very quiet one and he was the only one talking and right now what he says goes and we're seeing the game plan in action as Tay Ray gets that first down right there we're gonna see Tay Ray get another handoff to the left hand side and pick up yet another first down so listen we already said we definitely didn't need, we needed to establish a run game and we're trying to do that now when we see back-to-back -back good carries from our big time freshman tay ray man so anyway that's going to put the ball on the 49 it's first and 10 and we're going to see love let it go play action to ray and he's looking for glover over the top ah and glover had the catch and dropped it that play right there it was called at a perfect time executed perfectly we just need glover to show up in this game man he needed to make that catch but anyway we're going to see Rush spell Ray this, this time, and he's going to go to the left-hand side and pick up a first down, and looks like we're going to tack on a face mask on top of that. So right now, the Sharks run game is, is trying to bring some life back to this offense, and maybe we just need to lean more into that. As we see, Notre Dame's coach didn't like that, but who cares? Anyway, first down, Sharks are on the 23. It's first and 10, man. Three minutes and 40 seconds in this third quarter. As we see Russ get another handoff, but this time he's stuck quickly in the backfield. And so that's going to leave it at second and 10, man. Ball still on the 23. Sharks and shotgun. Love ladies dropping back to pass. He's drifting off to his right. He's running out of time. And he finds Glover over the middle, over the top. And that's a touchdown. And look, man, we were just talking up Glover, talking down to him, really. But he quickly showed us why he is who he is. And Joe Love Lady put that thing on a string, an absolute laser beam, man, getting the Sharks down the field and on the board in short order in the second half this is exactly what we needed to try and get back into this game so here we go man after that great drive right there by the sharks fitting lines up this extra point kick is up kick is good standard stuff not always standard with fitting you know how he goes but anyway man this is a good start so now the score is 28 to 14 as we get ready to kick off to what has been a really dangerous notre dame special teams group and Fenton kicks off to Mitchell again, who's already returned one for a touchdown in this game as he's looking for another lane, but brought down right there at the 25. And so that's where Notre Dame is going to start with the football and the Sharks defense looking for a chance at redemption, man, trying to do a little bit better than we did in that first half as Leonard is looking over the right-hand side for his receiver, but it was broken up right there by Rodriguez Diaz, who so far in this game has been playing really well. Just needs some of his teammates to kind of catch up to his energy, man. So shout out to Rodriguez Diaz right there. So it's now going to be second and 10. Ball still on 25. We see Notre Dame and shotgun. Leonard's going to drop back to pass. He's going to find Greathouse on a quick slant. And that pass right there went right by the face mask of Carter. Food just got a handout. Maybe could have came up with the pick right there. But 
Just an absolute bullet right there from Leonard. Good pass right there from the primetime quarterback. Notre Dame's leader right there trying to carry his team to victory. So anyway, man, we're going to see Leonard drop back to pass again. But this time, no one's going to be home there. Sharks have had absolutely great coverage right there on that play. So it's now going to be second and 10. Ball still on the 40. And Coach Hughes right now must have said something that the Sharks responded to because this defense is definitely standing up a little bit better than we were in that first half. And so here we go, man. On second down, we see Leonard go with a pass over the middle to his receiver. But then Steve Strong right there was able to put the big hit on the receiver, making sure he didn't come down with that catch, man. So like I said, this defense has got something to prove. We got something to play for in the second half. It's going to be a long second half, but right now we're starting off pretty good. So this is going to be a big third down conversion right here. And then once again, the Sharks come up with a big time play. Edwards right there all over that route, swatting the ball down. And that's going to result in a punt. And the Sharks are going to look to get the football back as credible is just going to fair catch this one inside the 20. And so Love Lady and company are going to take the field again on the 17, looking to go down and score again. And we'll see if we use that run game to do so as we did in the last drive, man. So here we go. We see Ray is going to take the counter to the left-hand side, get a couple yards to get tackled down. Decent gain of three right there. And so now we're going to see Rush in the, in the game to spell Ray. Ball on the 20, second and seven. And we see Rush get the carry to the left-hand side. He's got a whole lot of space. He had Glover Lee blocking up at the top. And Ray is going to get spun down all the way at the 45. And another... Great carry right there from the backup running back, man. And listen, Ray and Rush might have to be the two guys to carry this Sharks team to victory, man. Another great run off that left-hand side of the line. Much improved line from last year, man. And we can see um, running game is really carrying us right now. Another thing to note is we actually got Williams back in this game. Remember, he was on that two-game suspension. So he's already making a difference, man. So anyway, we see Love let it go play action. Rolling to his right. He's looking for Glover over the top. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Glover comes down with a catch, and Glover has got touchdown number two in this game off a 55-yard touchdown bomb from Love Lady to Glover. And listen, man, maybe all Glover needed was a little motivation. Maybe he heard me talking because right now he is putting his imprint on this game. Big-time throw and catch right there from the big-time quarterback Love Lady to Glover, man. And like I said, that connection right there is something we always love to see, and we need to have it right now. So that right there makes this a one-score game after this extra point is good, man. It's now 21-28. to 28. The Sharks come out in the second half and score quickly. And so here we go, man. Fitz is going to line up this kickoff, but he's going to kick it to Greathouse this time as we don't want to kick the ball to Mitchell anymore. But Greathouse is going to find a lane on the left-hand side, and he's got tons of speed. And he is not going to be caught. And he takes yet another kickoff to the house. 99-yard touchdown return. And just like that, in a blink of an eye, Notre Dame is back up two scores. The Sharks special teams is in shambles. They need help. Man, if it's one thing we can pinpoint in this game that has hurt us the most, and it's been special teams. If you remember, man, the first punt that we fumbled on the one-yard line. And then the kickoff return. Now this kickoff return. If it weren't for those three big plays, man, the Sharks would be in good shape. But that's not the way this game is gone. So now the Sharks offense have got to respond, man. We're going to start with the ball on the 25. A minute and 30 seconds left in this third quarter, man, as we see Tay Ray get another handoff to the left-hand side as he works his way towards that first down marker. Might have been brought down just short. They do mark him just short. So it's second and inches, man. Ball on the 35. Tay Ray still in the backfield. He's going to get the handoff right at the middle. He's got a whole lot of space. He makes a move on the safety. And almost gets down to the 50. Yet another first down right there. And these running backs, like I said, man, doing a whole lot of carrying right now. And we're going to need to lean on them to try and win this game. But we're kind of running out of time, and we're down two scores. So anyway, man, 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Tay Ray's still in the backfield. But we're going to see Love Lady drop back for a pass. And he's scrambling off to his right-hand side. He's running out of time. He's looking for his receiver over the top. And he finds Gray and gets all the way down to the 20. So right now, I know we've been talking a lot about the run game, but... The Sharks have having a healthy balance right now as Love Lady makes another big time throw to his receiver. And that was a freshman Gray right there. Came down with the catch, gets the Sharks all the way down to the 18. And so under 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Can the Sharks get points on the board before the fourth quarter? As we see Rush take a handoff to the right-hand side. He's got the first down, nearly gets down to the five, and then is brought down and gets another face mask tack on top of that run. And so that is another big time run right there by Rush. And they're having a hard time getting him to the ground. As they're having to grab his face mask, if you see Notre Dame's coach 
still in disbelief. Once again, who cares? Sark's on the three yard line, man. It's first and goal. Russ still in the backfield, man. 10 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And we see Russ is gonna take the carry and get in the end zone and finish this drive off and get the Sharks closer to tying this game up, man. With the extra point, man, hopefully it goes in. This is gonna be a one score game. And Rush has been a big time player right here. Coming in, um, you know, when Ray needs a breather, but not letting up, man, not missing a beat on the offense. And thankfully, man, we do see Fenton make this extra point attempt. And so now we're getting ready for this kickoff. And we already know for whatever reason, the Sharks have struggled mightily on special teams, man. So we, I don't know what we're gonna do. Maybe we just kick it out of bounds. But anyway, man, we're gonna see Fenton line this thing up and he's gonna kick it right down the middle of the field to the dangerous Mitchell, man. So here we go. Mitchell's gonna take this return off to the middle. He's looking for a lane up the middle, but it's brought down, thankfully, at the 27, man. So that's where Notre Dame is gonna start. Four seconds left on the clock in the third quarter, man. Getting ready to get into the fourth quarter. And it's coming down to the wire, man. This is a one-score game. The Sharks have came back in the second half, but we gotta be able to finish it out. So here we go, man. We see Leonard get a reception from his tight end again on the left-hand side, man, who goes up. Looks like he got past that first down marker. And that will take us into the fourth quarter. And Shark Nation, get them fours up right now. Get them fours up. Can we pull off this comeback win, man? 28-35, Notre Dame up right now at home. And Notre Dame's going to start with a toss to the right-hand side to the running back, Love, who found a little bit of space, but then is brought down. Shoestring tackle right there by Rodriguez Diaz. So a good gain of five right there to start this fourth quarter. And here we go, man. We see Leonard in shotgun. Love to his left. Second and five, ball on the 45. This clock is running, and Leonard's gonna drop back the pass. He's looking over the top for his receiver, but no one is home right there. And so a rare miss from Leonard in this game, which is gonna leave it at third and five. This is a huge third down right here. The Sharks need to stop badly as Leonard drops back the pass. He's looking for a receiver on the left, but no one's there, and he misses badly again. And so that is gonna make it fourth and five. Ball on the 45, man. Notre Dame is gonna go ahead and punt this football away. We cannot afford any special team's mistakes right here. As we see, Credible's going to receive the kick. And he's going to try to get to the sideline, but he's going to be quickly brought down. So listen, all we needed was just to get the offensive football back, and that is what we did. So we'll check that box off. Although we start on the 13-yard line, we'll take it. So here we go, man. Shark starting with the ball on the 13. As we see, Tay Ray is a single back in the backfield. Four minutes and 22 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Sharks down, one touchdown. As we see Ray get the hand off to the left-hand side, but it's brought down behind the line, losing two on that play. So it's now second and 12, ball on the 11, and that clock is still running, coming near the four-minute mark. And we see Love Lady drop back in shotgun, looking over the middle of the field for Glover, who's got his receiver, and he's got a little bit of space. Picks up the first down and a little bit more on that one. And that's what we need to see in this fourth quarter. Late in this game, man, Love Lady has got to find Glover, got to find him often, and just try to get the... Ball in the hands of one of our best playmakers, man. And so here we go, man. It's first and 10 after that nice throw. Ball on 31, three minutes and 34 seconds left. And we see a handoff. Go to Tay Ray. It's going to the left-hand side. He's looking for space but can't find it. It's a gain of about one right there. Actually, they say he didn't pick up anything. So a second and 10. Ball still on the 31. That clock is still ticking. And we see Love Lady and shotgun right to his right. Love Lady's going to go with a screen to go on the right-hand side. But he's going nowhere. And it's quickly tripped up, man. And that right there, maybe not the best play call late in this game, man, going with a screen. But anyway, it's going to be third and nine, ball on the 32. This crowd is up on their feet. The number 19 toughest crowd in the nation, making it difficult for the Sharks to try to run a play right here. As we see, Love Lady's going to drop back, and he's scrambling to his left-hand side. He's looking for a receiver. He's looking for Higgins. This time he finds him, and he's on the sideline. And Higgins comes down with yet another big-time catch. And that right there. We couldn't have asked for better, man. Love Lady to Higgins. Higgins, man, coming back for that throw right there, making the catch. We thought he got out of bounds, but apparently he didn't as the clock's still running. But anyway, man, first and 10, ball on the 48. We see Russ get the handoff. He cuts back to the left, spins his way for a gain of about five right there. And so here we go. We get the ball all the way down to the 47. And now we get to a point where we're starting to play scenarios. If we can go down and get a touchdown in this game and tie the game up, do we want to leave enough time for Riley and company to go down and try to score again. But before we do that, man, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Love Lady gets sacked in the backfield. A huge loss right there, forcing the Sharks to burn their first time out in this fourth quarter, man. A minute and 38 seconds left to go in this game. And right there, that's something we definitely couldn't afford, man. All season, we've been saying Love Lady's just got to make better decisions and throw the ball away if he's in danger. 
But anyway, man, we ain't got time to reflect on the pass. We got to play now. It's third and 15. Ball on the 43. We need this play right here. As Love Lady's looking for, for Glover on the left-hand side. Quickly, he breaks one tackle. He's got a little bit of space. And Glover gets caught, but he gets all the way down to the 23. Not only converting that third down, but getting the Sharks near red zone territory. And we needed that play right there from our senior man. We had to have it. Called his number, and he came through for us yet again. So here we go, man. Like we were saying before that sack, man, this is a scenario where we definitely need to score, but we might not want to leave too much time on the clock. But anyway, we're going to see Love Lady get the snap. It's a high snap. He's looking for Glover on the left-hand side in the quicksand. He finds Glover again. Gets down to the 14. It's second and one. Clock still running. Sharks going shotgun again. Tay Ray to Love Lady's right. He's going to get the handoff. He's going to go up the middle and pick up the first down, which moves the chains and will stop the clock momentarily. So we do see the Sharks go hurry up. 55 seconds left to go in this game. Sharks down one score. This crowd is on their feet. Love Lady's trying to make adjustments, but the receivers just might not be able to hear. Here we go, man. Love Lady's going to take the snap. He's going to look for Glover on the left-hand side. He comes through yet again on that quick slant. One of the Sharks' favorite plays, man. And so it's going to be second and two. We are at 30, under 30 seconds left to go in this game. We're going to see the Russ get the handoff, and Russ is going to score a four-yard touchdown run and potentially tie this football game up with only 25 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. So we are potentially looking at a tight game right here. And the Sharks have managed to make an incredible comeback on the road against Notre Dame, man. When Notre Dame really had all their cards in their hand, the kick is good. It is now a tie ball game, 35-35. And man, this has been a roller coaster ride. Now here we go, man. Fitton is lining this kickoff and we've already seen two of these go back to the house. We cannot have that on this play. So here we go, man. We're going to kick it to Great House, who, like I said, already has one. Go to the house. He's finding a little lane on the left-hand side, but thankfully, McGee comes shooting in and finally brings him down at the 30, man. And this is what college football is all about. Notre Dame will start on a 29. 22 seconds left to go. Leonard's going to drop back the pass. He's trying to scramble off to the right-hand side. Oh, my God. Troop strips the football away. Carter picks it up. Carter's got a whole lot of space. He's got a whole lot of space on the left-hand side. He's going to score to scoop and score and give the Sharks the lead late in this game with only 12 seconds left to go on the clock. Oh my goodness. That play right there was insane. Leonard just trying to avoid the sack late in the game. Troop comes from behind and strips the football out. And not only do we recover, Carter goes all the way to the end zone, outrunning everybody. He, there was no way they were gonna be able to deny him that touchdown. And the Sharks right now are in the position to go up seven. I I almost have no words. This is this is insane right here. This is why we play college football. This is why we love this game. The Sharks go up 42-35, 12 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. We're gonna get a flag for excessive celebration, but they they can take that flag and throw it where you know what I'm you know what I'm getting at. But listen, man, this has been insane man from the way we started this game mistake after mistake we definitely could not stop the notre dame offense and here we are man fitton's gonna get this kickoff man he's gonna kick it to mitchell on the 30 and mitchell's gonna have a chance to return this one he's gonna find his way up to the 47 and man with nine seconds left on the clock this game is not over we're likely gonna see a last minute hail mary right here as we see leonard actually goes short to cooley he gets 10 yards on that play they call a timeout so there's five seconds left in this game and i'm sure the sharks are just going to drop everybody back and we're going to see leonard probably throw this one as far as he can to the end zone but before that we're going to see nehemiah hood come shooting in and get the sack on the quarterback big time play from the freshman right there and they call a timeout with one second left on this clock the ball is on the opposite 46 and this is it right here. This is the game right here. So we see Leonard drop back the pass. He's going to look for a receiver. He's not even going to be able to get the throw off as Hood comes in again and makes a big hit on the quarterback. And that is going to end this game. The Sharks walk out of Notre Dame with a narrow victory. And my goodness, it couldn't have been any closer. This game right here is definitely going to be one for the books. I mean, I don't know. almost didn't even know what to say. Like I said, man, from the way we started this game, just not playing Sharks football, man. We had to go in that locker room. Coach Hughes had to say, he must have gave one of the greatest speeches of all time because the Sharks find a way to pull it out, man. Sharks get the dub, man, and this 
week, we're actually going to take a look at the WX Sports Gear plays of the game, man. And we could not name a single player. We're just going to have to identify plays, man. So anyway, this right here was that big time third down conversion from Higgins late in the game, man, late in the fourth quarter. And then right after that, man, we see Love Lady. He's dropping back the pass. This is another third down conversion where he finds Glover on the left hand side who breaks the tackle and gets us near the red zone. And then Russ right there finishing that playoff. And then the defense, man, our defense, Shannon Troop coming up with the biggest play of likely of his career, man. The strip sack and then Carter having the awareness to scoop and score. Ultimately, man, giving the Sharks the win, man. I I am still in, in shock right now. I can't believe Troop came up with that play. But listen, man, that was absolutely pivotal, man. This this is what Sharks football is all about, man. This is why this Blue Shark program is one of the best in the nation. As we see Nehemiah Hood, man, finishing the game, putting an exclamation point on the game, man. And so, look, if we go and look at the game stats, man, this this was an absolute great game. It was it was it was a matchup nobody expected, man. Um, but if we take a look, man, up to obviously the end of the score, end score was 42-35. Um, total offense, surprisingly, man, the Sharks dominated um, in total offense. It was really special teams. In all honesty, man, the special teams of Notre Dame is elite. I tip my hats to them. Two kick returns for a touchdown, man. And then they had that forced fumble on the punt uh, early in the game, man. But listen, the Sharks found a way. The Sharks found a way. We found a way to stay in this game, to stay scrappy. We did not hang our hats when we were down three scores going into halftime. We stayed in the game, man. We kept fighting. We had some big time performances from our freshmen, man. We've seen some of our seniors step up in Love Lady and Glover. And ultimately, man, we got the win on the road. Back to back games on the road, man. The Sharks are now five and oh. Go ahead and give it up for the Blue Sharks, man. We are absolutely rolling. And, I, and listen, man, I love it. So anyway, man, that right there is going to end this episode, man. This was an absolute crazy episode, crazy game, crazy week. But next week, man, we got the Arizona Wildcats with this game. This game is going to be another big time game, man. If you remember last year, this was when we dropped. We dropped this one on the road and it was unexpected. We definitely thought we would win and we did not. But anyway, man, look, if you enjoyed this video today, man, if this brought you some joy, if it made your day a little bit better, man, do me a favor and go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel today. And remember, a little bit every day goes a long way, man. So once you take that first step, don't look back. I'm IC3, 3000 to be exact. I hope I see you guys in the next one. And if I don't, when you go ahead and run this one back.